nice to have you let's talk about isotopy and relative atomic masses of element the word isotopy simply means a process or a phenomenon whereby an element has the same atomic number but different mass number the difference in mass number of course is due to the difference in the number of neutrons in the atom of course we said the nucleus of an atom consists of the protons and the neutrons while the electrons are revolving around the atom in an orbital manner or in the form of an orbit just as it is shown in the screen here here we have a common element as hydrogen indicating three isotopes of the at of the element hydrogen in the first isotope here or in the first atom we have the element having one proton without neutron so hydrogen in the first case does not have a neutron rather it has one proton and one electron in the second case it has one proton and one neutron and also one electron while in the third case it has two neutrons and one proton so we can clearly say that the number of protons is the same in an isotope while the number of neutrons are different that explains why the relative atomic masses of some elements are not whole numbers it is simply because the element exists as isotopes a common example of an element that exists as an isotope is the element chlorine with two possible isotopes so we have chlorine having two isotopes the first one having mass number of 3517 and chlorine also written as 37 cl so here we can see that the number of protons which is the atomic number is the same while the mass number is different based on the number of neutrons so in the first case if i subtract here in the first atom if i have mass minus protons I will have 35 minus 17 to give me the number of neutrons. Also, in the second case, I can have 37 minus 17 to give me a particular number of neutrons. So, it is clearly indicated that the difference in the number of neutrons will determine the type of atom if it exists as an isotope. Other elements that exhibit isotopy are elements such as we have elements like oxygen which has three possible isotopes. So we have oxygen with mass number 16, atomic number 8. We also have element oxygen with atomic number 8 and mass number 17. We also have another isotope of oxygen with mass number 18 and atomic number 8. So these are the three isotopes of oxygen. Another example of element that exhibit isotopy is the element carbon. Of course, carbon has two major isotopes with one having mass number of 12, mass number of 12, sorry, and the other having mass number of 13. So we can have two isotopes of carbon written in this form clearly indicating the difference in the number of neutrons. Of course, if you subtract the number of protons from the mass number, you will see the number of neutrons that it is clearly different. So mass is equal to the number of neutrons plus number of protons, while the neutrons is simply the mass number minus the number of protons. And the number of protons is simply mass minus the number of neutrons. So that is how isotopes are being represented elements or atoms having the same atomic number or different mass number due to the difference in the number of neutrons having talked about that let's look at an example of how to calculate the relative atomic mass of an element that exists as an isotope what is relative atomic mass the relative atomic mass of an element is simply defined as the number of times the mass of one mole of an element is heavier than 12 grams of carbon. Based on that, we are trying to relate the 
atomic masses of other elements to the mass of carbon. Of course, carbon has a relative atomic mass of 12. So based on that, we can relate the masses of all other elements to 12 grams of carbon. So relative atomic masses of elements are not written with whole numbers or are not whole numbers due to the presence of isotopes or because the element exhibits isotopy. Taking a look at the question we have here in our screen, the jam UTME 2014, question number 11. The question states that a silicon or has 92% 28 silicon, 5% 29 silicon, and 3% 30 silicon. The question is calculate the relative atomic mass of the silicon. Calculate the relative atomic mass of the silicon. Taking a look at the question, we will notice that we have three isotopes of the element silicon. That is, silicon has three basic isotopes. So we can say solution to our question here. The first isotope has mass number 28 and the percentage abundance is 92%. So we say isotope 28 Si is equal to 92% abundance. We also have isotope 29 silicon is equal to 5% abundance. Then we have the last one here, which is isotope, isotope 30 silicon is equal to 3% abundance. So when we say percentage, we are talking about 100, something expressed in terms of 100. So here, by adding this, we can have 92 plus 5 plus 3 to give us a total of 100%. So the, the, the silicon must exist in terms of what? 100%. Okay? Now, taking a look at the different isotopes, we can easily calculate the relative atomic mass of silicon using the word the percentage abundance and the mass numbers. Now, remember we said isotopes of elements have the same atomic number but different mass number. So the first isotope here, which is Si, it has 28 as the word, the mass number. The second one has 29 as a mass number, while the third one has 30 as a mass number. So based on that, based on that, we can have we can have relative relative atomic mass of silicon as what we do is we simply multiply the percentage of the the percentage abundance and the mass number in individual cases so the first one here is 92 isotope 92 percentage abundance has mass number 28 so we have 92 percent of 28 plus 5 percent of 29 plus 3 percent of 30. Okay, so with this we can have 92 percent simply means 92 over 100 multiplied by 28 over 1 plus 5% simply means 5 over 100 multiplied by 29, okay? So we can have plus 3% is 3 over 100 multiplied by 30, okay? So based on this, we can have the first one as 92% multiplied by 28 divided by 100 will simply give us 25.76 plus the... 5% of 29, which is 5 over 100, multi 5 times 29, multiply, divide by 100, will simply give us 1.45 plus 
3 multiplied by 30 divided by 100 will give us 0 0.9. So adding these together will give us 28.11. So this is the relative atomic mass of silicon. Of course, from the question here, we can see that the relative atomic mass of silicon is not a whole number. There is definitely a fraction or a decimal fraction because the element silicon exists as what well, an isotope. And we said it in the beginning that the existence of element as isotopes indicates why the atomic or the relative atomic masses of elements are not written with whole numbers. Based on that, we can conclude that the relative atomic masses of element can be calculated when given the percentage abundance. Also, let's take a look at another question. In this case, we have to calculate the relative atomic masses of the element not based on percentage abundance or based on the ratio in which they exist in the compound. Let's take a look at JAMB UTME 2016 question number one. The question is, an element X has two isotopes, X20 and X22, present in the ratio 1 ratio 3. How can you calculate the relative atomic mass of X? The relative atomic mass of X, based on what we've done before, can be calculated using the ratio of the individual atoms in the isotope. Okay, so based on that, we can have Okay, the solution to our question here. So we have isotope, isotope 20 x 10 equal to what? The ratio has a ratio of one. We also have isotope, isotope x 22 10 has a ratio of three. Okay, so we can have a total of the ratio, then we add it together. After adding it together, we can simply divide it with the masses of the element. Or we can also have it in this form by multiplying the different masses with the ratios. So based on that, we can have isotope with mass number 20 and ratio of 1 can be written as so we can say contribution, contribution of isotope, contribution of isotope x20 equal to 20 multiplied by 1, which is equal to 20. We also have contribution of isotope x22, 10 equal to 22 multiplied by 3. So 22 multiplied by 3 will give us 66. Okay. So, okay. So we can have the total contribution, total contribution of isotopes total contribution of isotopes will simply give us 20 plus 66. Of course, 20 plus 66 will simply give us 86. Okay, so we can have our total ratio, total ratio as 1 plus 3, which is 4. Okay, so the relative, relative atomic mass of x is equal to 86 divided by 4. So 86 divided by 4 will simply give us 21.5, which is the relative atomic mass of the element. It is as simple as that. So the relative atomic mass of an element can either be calculated based on the percentage abundance, that is, if the question is given to you in terms of percentage abundance or if it is given to you in terms of what ratio in which the different atoms exist in the compound.
Based on that, we can clearly say the atom of an element which exists as an isotope can simply be represented in different forms of the isotopes, giving the same atomic number but different mass number in the following forms as we can have x written here as x2010 and x2210. So this indicates the two isotopes of the element x. With this, we've come to the end of today's class on isotopes and relative atomic masses.